Hey guys, welcome to this episode. I am super excited. See, I'm doing the Chuck Barris gong show thing. Um, I'm so excited about this. This, as the title said, is the first time we are actually having a Gibson guitar in the shop and on the bench. Now, before you get all freaked out, it is not an arch top. It is not a semi hollow body, but it is literally made out of a slab of wood. And you'll see that in a minute. Um, but in honor of the slab of wood, I wore my Slab City t-shirt. Do you know about Slab City? Hey, I'm going to give you a link below. Link below. And you click on that and you'll find out the Slab City is a place where you can live for free outside of Nyland, California. Nyland, California, cultural capital of the world. But it is so hot there in the summertime that people in Death Valley feel sorry for people in Nyland. Anyway. It takes a special feat to live there year-round. I want to give a shout-out to my friend, Allie Page. Hey, Allie Page. She has actually spent an entire year-round in Nyland, California, and that's very few people. Shout-out to my friend, Allie Page. This is a Gibson lap steel. See, it's made out of a slab of wood, a solid piece of wood. And um, fortunately, I had... Uh, somebody had taped this, taking this off, but taped it to this. This, this part would be irreplaceable. If you see these on uh, eBay or, or Reverb, you're going to see them somewhere between $100 and $200. The bodies can go up to that, $250 or something like that. So basically the resale on these is at least $200 if not more. So I got these. I was looking at them at a shop locally. Uh, problem is somebody had... Um, used masking tape to tape this to keep it there and I'm kind of glad that they did uh, to keep this together because when these things are apart and floating around a junk store they tend to be separated but the problem is is some of the original paint is peeling off doing the masking and stuff like that so I really hate to do this but the first step before we get to the bench is I am going to take this and I am going to spray it with a um, flat matte coating of overspray so we can protect what's here um, once I get that done then we'll put it on the bench and we'll take a look at what it is but I've got to get this paint um, stabilized where it's not chipping off and flaking off anymore uh, in the event someone wants to fix this later and restore it or we find the parts I want to make sure that there's no extra holes in it and that the paint can be restored which means we can pull off uh, the clear finish that we've put on it. I really don't want to put any gloss on it or anything that's going to change the appearance of the way it looks right now because we are going to junk pile this up. So let me get this coated a couple times. Um, we're going to get Tammy's signature on it because you know my work without Tammy it doesn't exist and then we'll put it on the bench and I'll give you some ideas about how can we can junk pile this thing up and uh, make it playable again. Okay guys we are at the bench. We have put a coat of matte clear over this whole thing um, to stabilize the paint like I said before you can see where there's the width of some masking tape that was holding the the um, you want to call it a fingerboard or fretboard or whatever you want to call it here on um, but we're going to need to tape some areas off and get patterns is what we're doing so we've had Tammy sign it here and of course they all get signed if you don't like Tammy's signature then you don't need one of my guitars anyway I'm going to flip this over and get this set up what I want to do right now is run you through a series of clips so you can see what these things looked like um, when they were new you can see the body you can see that the headstock you can see the electronics and you can especially see the like things like the jack plate and the cover for all that they kind of look like a manta ray anyway take a few seconds run through that familiarize yourself with that I'm going to give you a link below to a to a Google search that um, helps you see so you can reference uh, what these things look like and when they're original so let's have you do that I'll get the bench set up
All right, guys, we are at the bench. You had a look at kind of what this was supposed to look like when it was new or one that's complete. This one certainly is not. We've got the body and we've got the fingerboard with the holes, and I'm very fortunate to have that. Now, remember, the idea here is the holes that are here, we're going to use those, even though we don't have the original parts. We're going to put this together, make it fully playable, but not drill new holes and um and that way it's restorable if somebody were to get a hold of it or i decided i would luckily run across the part somewhere but anyway first thing we want to take a look at and if you remember you can always refer back to those photos is let's zoom in on the electronics area here if we can a little bit see if i can get the right zoom in this time now you always want to remember that guitars make great tables, but put a put a piece of cloth there. Now, as you saw in the pictures, these things came with P90 pickups, like this one. Okay, except you can see where's my baby pointer? I like baby pointer. You can see that those holes. There's a hole right there and one right there. There was a piece of bracket that ran underneath this pickup and extended past here and past here. So it would flip upside down and bolt there. We don't have that. This is not an original pickup. The original pickups are worth a ton of money. They're crude. Uh, they were wrapped with electrical tape and stuff like that. But the bottom line is we got to put something like this here across here and mount it. And again, have it be reversible in case we need to fix it later. So, I actually have reproductions. I can use a black one or a cream colored one. The cream colored one might go with the body a little bit better. But you remember this manta ray looking hood thing that stuck up over here. And then the strings came out the front and you could see to load the strings on a bridge that sat back here. And this was all covered by one of those things. I'm not going to be able to make one of those things, but I am going to cover this up with a piece of metal that um, will hide a lot of these cavities and things like that. So, first thing I got to do is figure out what is the pickup going to look like and what are, what are the pots going to be and all that so I can figure out how to build this cover. Now, when it comes to the cover, I'm going to cut apart this old Pet Boys axle grease can. Um, gear lubricant you see that um, unlike a coffee can this can is smooth all the way around so I'll find a place on the can that kind of matches everything the camera angle is tight here but I'll cut this out and lay it flat on here okay so the first thing I want to do is I am going to figure out that I am going to use these screws that pop up here you see that one there and one there they come through the bottom on both of these pickups these pick pickups are the same dimensions but I am going to mount those onto a piece of wood that will fit right in here. Now, I think somebody may have tried to do that because there is a hole right there and one that is kind of filled in there. I don't know. Um, but I am going to need to put something in here since I don't have that bracket. I also want to kind of compensate for that bracket by figuring it was at least about that thick. So... I'm going to glue a piece of wood in here that this whole assembly will fit on and then what am I going to use in case I want to pull this out again and restore this back to this. Well of course I'm going to use hide glue because it's heat activated. I simply put it on the piece of wood I'm going to put in here. So let's get on the piece of wood. First thing we need to know is I'm going to take this and push down and now the piece of wood is about that thick plus a tad to get it up over that to account for that bracket that went through here. While we're in here, I want to point out that where the bracket was on this side, you can see the wood is cracked right there, and you can see that it broke off here, which is indicative of somebody seeing a pickup that would fit in a 54 Les Paul and just taking a screwdriver and popping it out and popping the screws and throwing this thing in the trash can. So uh, just a little interesting thing here, but back to this piece of wood. 
So I've measured this already. It's 80 millimeters. I've taken a piece of our neck cut off that we would use on a cigar box guitar or a coffee can license plate guitar. I've marked that. Then what I want to do is I want to cut it off and I want to round the corners off to where it fits right in there like that. Now, there's a piece of wire that comes out of the coil. I want to account for that by leaving a little bit of a gap over there. I want to mark the center of this off because there is the center there. But I want to know how tall is this in comparison to the cavity it fits in. I can simply take my pencil and go like this and get my marks there. Can you see that? And sand that down a little bit and put my hide glue in there and then drop it in. Now, I've taken it to the uh, belt sander, rounded everything off, got everything the depth I needed, and it, don't forget that wire. We don't want to mash that wire. So I've taken this, marked the end of it, taken my saw, cut a little groove, and then taken my file and went back and forth on this way and this way. And so if I put this on here, that wire will fit right down in there without getting crimped. Now I simply put this here and then once it's glued in with hide glue which again can be removed if it needs to be by heating it up with a heat gun that allows me once that is stabilized to set this on here like so and run the screws through pre-drilled holes here so I'll just simply take these out take a small bit drill a pilot hole and then I can mount this to here and it will be solid. Then I will have some idea about what my cover is going to look like. The pots will just pop up through holes. I may only use one. Um, I don't see a reason to put a piezo on this. I'll just put a volume control on it and I can put that pot anywhere I want. Now's the time to figure out what did that cover look like and how are we going to cut a cover out of this and have it look good and incorporate the pickup. Okay, now we're gonna get tricky. Do you remember the episode I did about how to put matchbooks on a six string neck? If you don't, it's right up there, right about now. But what we did was we took a manila folder, it was long enough for a six string neck like this, opened it up, laid it on the neck, let's get the camera angle, and then cut it out to file the neck. Then we taped the matchbooks on there digitized it and then as we needed to we were able to go and digitally widen and lengthen the matchbooks to make it fit we're going to do something like that in the case of this cover right here now remember i told you i was very very interested in getting this surface stabilized because i knew this part was coming up i'm going to have to put painter's tape on here and I don't want to put painter's tape on and then pull it up and think, oh, you know what, I just ruined more paint. So if you look very closely, right there, right there, and over in this area here and here, I can see it. Um, there are remnants of the line of where that cover used to ride the guitar like there right there like so then it made a bend over here right there I can see that line right there and I know that there's one over here in the same area like that I know that I can see right there and right there like so and then I can see where it bends right across here then it came back around and turned right here and came up here I can see it there I don't think I'm going to do that I think that once I line this one up I am going to go all the way across like so There we go. And then I have one more, which is right there. 
All right, now I can take a piece of paper. I'll check everything because I was working back a distance. Make sure everything is right. Now I can take a piece of paper and trace this out, make sure these lines are right. I can lay that onto this piece of folder and make myself a pattern. While I've got the paper in there, I know that this is going to stick up like so. And so I'm actually going to have to cut this out where this pickup is going to go out of the center of this. On the original one, the bridge was hid behind here. And so um, it's going to cover a different area, but it's going to look good and it's going to be functional. So this is how I get the pattern for this. All right, here's the tricky part, guys. We take a piece of typing paper and we lay it on there and we... You know what? I can't see it. Well, maybe if I pull it back a little bit or... No, you know what? I got an idea. Get in the baking drawer where they make keep stuff for cookies. You know what parchment paper is? You see that? Remember George Clinton and the parchment Funkadelic? Yeah, you just take some of this tape like this right here and put that there like that and like so. And now I can see, now I can take my pencil, I can make a little, a little line here and a little line there and maybe a little baby tree over here in this area and then take a straight edge and connect these and make a pattern. All right, I have my pattern uh, and I think that you can see that I traced out the cavity. These all match up and I and most importantly put a, it shifted just a little bit here. I put dots where the holes go because I'm gonna have to drill through um, the piece of metal that's going to cover all this and plus having this cut out here is going to make it real easy for me to spot where the pickup goes. I can also right now pull the screws out of here, put my board in and put the pickup in and trace that while it's here. Anyway, I'm going to transfer this pattern onto the folder here and cut that out and I'll catch up with you after that. All right, there we go. I can lay that on a flat piece of metal and just cut it out. And again, I can take an awl and I've marked off where my holes go. Let's see if I can poke a hole through my finger or make the hole too big like that and just go around and do all that. And that becomes my pattern for the piece of metal that's going to replace the manta ray looking thing. Okay, so we've got all this figured out now bridge that is a problem you can see that the bridge on this thing took up a very small area and you can tell whenever something is going to take strings here and then bend up sharply and come over here this is going to want to pull itself out of the wood so i'm looking at this going hey how can i what what can i use for this i got a hold of my friend mr matchbook remember the mr matchbook episode it's right up there it was a good one make sure you see that one anyway we were looking through all of our parts and trying to figure out what we could do and who knows what. And remember, the whole trick is I do not want to drill any extra holes in here. It would have been really easy to put a tailpiece back here, a short tailpiece, and then any kind of a bridge here, including a, um, a floating bridge like so cut down. But I did want to drill holes. So... I'm worried about this and what do you know I am literally driving down the road and the freeway shut down so I took back roads and we actually went through this development that they're building and I come through a roundabout where there's construction going on and I find this thing it is a hold right r-i-t-e not R-I-G-H-T, R-I-T-E, that's important. And I think it's something that you put on a sign. And I, I, as soon as I saw it, I knew, hey, look, it's got holes there. It's got a lip up here. And it's got holes here. Do you see what I'm thinking? So there's a hole there, there, and there. Oh, look, there's a hole there. There's space there. There's one drill that almost was, looks like it was drilled for it. So 
if I cut this off at the first spacing, like so, this thing will work perfectly, at least to how it mounts. Next thing is, I got a 56 string here, which is, by the way, that's the top string on this thing. I pull it through there, like so, see that? It immediately bends up and there is my bridge. I cannot believe what I found in the roadside by the ditch. She's got me under pressure. Okay, let's flip this thing around because we got all this taken care of. People are like, dude, you are lucky. It's like, come on, spiritual hobo. Remember that episode? Where's my pointer? Oh, you got to see that one. Things just happened for me. The planets line up. You feel gravitational pulled. It feels strange. Uh, yeah, it's something good has happened to me. So let's flip this stuff around. Get this neck holder right here because here's my next problem area the bridge it looked to me like there was a metal bridge on uh, the ones we saw in the picture and I like to use bone bridges myself so I'm looking at one right here you know what I can sand this down a little bit it's just a tad wide and it'll just sit right down it but you know what it's not long enough so um, what am I going to do? Am I going to wait three weeks to get one of those? Or I started thinking, you know what? Remember these, these floating bridges that I take this part and throw away the bottom piece? Well, I started looking and it's like, you know what? If I cut this off right here and this off right here, two of these is about what it takes exactly to fit in there. Let's try that. All right, I cut the feet off of two of these. There we go. I'm going to glue these together and clamp everything. And those will fit right there. I can cut them, just cut them to the edge and then file them and work them just like a nut. And they're rosewood, so they'll be plenty sturdy. And this will get me up where I need to be to get those strings off the deck anyway. All right, missing tuners, no problem. I just happened to have a set of Grover tuners that weren't on a guitar very long before somebody put a nice set of Gibsons on them. Wish I had those, but these will work fine. I've already tested them. They're brand new, and they will complement this nicely. All right, the missing jack plate, not a big deal. I've got jacks. Um, I have happen to have something from MGB. Look at this. Of course, I don't want to drill any new holes, so I would just take this and a square. Look at it. these holes line up right there. I'm going to have to take a little bit off of there, but I've marked off where that hole goes, that hole goes, and I just drill there, there, and drill the center out, round the edges off, and take a tad off right there, and I've got that ready to go. I don't think you need to learn my trade secrets as I cut up a can and do all kinds of fancy proprietary stuff like that. So let's just get this wrapped up and I'll show you when it's done and then you can covet it effectively and efficiently. All right, guys, this is done. This is literally a day project. If you knew that you had the pickups and you knew that you were going to find something in the middle of the road uh, by where they're putting up stop signs and you had a, a can or two laying around. This was a really simple project. Um, there's not much to it. It's a piece of slab about that thick. I'd like to trace it and see if I can't get myself sued by Gibson. But um, yeah, I couldn't be happier. It makes noise. Um, unlike a, a, a slide, playing slide on a one of our junky um, cigar boxes or something, this thing requires that you use something metal and that you put a lot of pressure down. That's the first thing I know. But what do I know? I don't play. So let's put this thing on a stand and kind of go through it and take a closer look. All right, let's start with the back. Like I said, I didn't want to do anything to this that was irreversible. So this thing had been around, been pitched around. They start off as a student instrument. So we did absolutely nothing except put Tammy's signature on it and put a set of Grover tuners on it.
All right, here's the front. Let's start off on the side with the jack plate there. A piece of metal can, uh, a wood cover from MGB, and a jack. And amazing what you can do with a Pep Boys axle grease can. Um, got a volume pot there with a nice little knob on there that kind of matches that weird yellow. And the funny part about this is, again, finding a piece of a, a mount for some kind of a post that goes in the ground to hold a stop sign or something, laying in the middle of the road really saved the day. Um, it worked with the scale and everything. Okay, we got that Mach P90. Of course, we had to put some chick flick teal screws in the fret board or fret marker or whatever you want to call it. Um, throwaways from floating bridge bottoms that I use. And of course, there's the tuner. I like seeing that name in my shop. Oh, there it is. All right, there we go. I mean, anybody can do this. Um, this makes me want to keep my eyes open for these things because I think they're pretty easy to work on and bring back to life. Um, I certainly uh, am going to warn you now because I'm going to take this in the house and hook it up to an amp and we'll see if that it does make some noise and noise is going to be the right word because I can't play it all. Anyway, it's going to make me uh, want to dig out my Speedy West and Bud Isaacs. Check those out. That's probably where the truth be known. Me being a little kid in the early 60s and hearing the twang steel guitar out of the late 50s and early 60s is probably what makes me like Bob McSide. Anyway, I'll end this by showing you that it makes some noise. I appreciate you watching this. I appreciate your comments. And hey, make one of these out of a piece of wood. Pretty simple. Certainly don't have to worry about action, height action, action, height of the action. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you next time. Let's go.